Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And let me say how delighted we are at uh, Macquarie for once again sponsoring the annual IPA conference. It is the infrastructure forum in this country and continues to enjoy the support of all sectors of the infrastructure family. Now, you'll all be aware of the growing demand for infrastructure in terms of volume, improved service standards that people are acquiring, and it really starts from the general public. Right? So when we look at why do we have, why do we have the increased demand for infrastructure? It starts from the public. Because of the public demand, governments have to respond, and then the private sector falls, falls into line. So whether it's the sponsors, the debt and equity, it's all there. Now, we all know it's the case, but let's just pause a bit and look at some statistics as to why this is actually happening. Now, all of us know your GDP going up every year, 2 3%. We had the GFC. We thought it would decline. It slowed a bit, but it's back on track. Now, if you look at annual health spending, household health, health expenditure sort of tracked GDP. When you look at household transport expenditure, well in excess of GDP. Yeah, well in excess of GDP. Now, this includes expenditure on uh, fuel, on your cars, and people are having extra cars and the like. But basically, what we see sustaining this level of GDP growth, and I've just used two two benchmarks, but sustaining this, this level of GDP growth for the country is at least $500 billion required over the next decade, and some figures are more than double this. Right, so there are massive demands for finance for us to keep this growth going, and I think the immigration debate's a very good one. However, having looked at it, this amount of expenditure And when you look at the maths, uh, the federal government are trying hard, are trying hard. And in the, and, and in the latest uh, budget, to do the maths, assume my numbers are right, 50, 50 billion a year, federal government spending 20 of it, approximately. So a big hole for the private sector to fill. Now, why do we believe, why do we believe that the private sector is up for the challenge, despite financial markets being the way they are on a continuing basis around the world? Well, the reality is, in our opinion, there's heaps of private sector capital available. Now, just in the recent times, there's been almost $20 billion raised in new infrastructure funds. There's $40 billion available just in the infrastructure funds alone today. Right? This doesn't count the direct investments that pension funds and other listed companies can make. These are infrastructure funds that are available around the world, $40 billion to spend, and there's $1.3 trillion in the Australian superannuation fund business. So despite a fundamental shift in the funding source, the appetite for infrastructure continues unabated. Now, where is the gap? What about other options that people have. Well, if we look at the listed market, and if we look at where we think the gap is going to be between the supply of product that's going to be available for the superannuation funds and other investors to invest in the listed market, so whether it's primary issues or secondary issues in the coming uh, year or so, there's a gap, and the gap's about 30 billion. So assume everything that we know to today in the listed market happens, and everything we know today about fund inflows, this is just Australia, by the way, yep, just Australia, there's a $30 billion minimum surplus of money that's got to find a home. So when you find the big Australian pension funds and the Australian funds investing overseas, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt that they'd rather have Aussie dollar exposure, they'd rather have Aussie dollar exposure after you to take into account the diversity and the like, but they'd rather have Aussie dollar exposure because most of the obligations are in Aussie dollars. And the issue is one of supply of product rather than availability of money. 
When we pause again and we look at the Superfund asset allocation, rule of thumb, rule of thumb, about 5% is allocated to infrastructure from a very low, low number about 10 years ago. So this has grown rapidly, but it's still only about 5%. We think that the average superannuation in investment contribution just in Australia over the next decade or so could rise to about 15%, from about 5% to 15% because of the nature of the assets. Now, again, the volume of money that that would create, technically, it won't go there because they won't have the ability to invest all this money. But if the projects were there, the capacity, even within our own system, is there to fund exactly what we need to fund to meet all the GDP targets that everybody set. So this is not a funding constraint within the Australian market. I sort of see the point that in periods of time, financial markets will be constrained. But we're not talking about an investment class that is particularly exciting. In fact, standing up here and trying to make a presentation about investing in infrastructure, a passionate one, is pretty challenging because as a general rule, these assets range from the dead boring to the barely interesting. Right? And that's the, whole, that's the whole thesis. That's the whole thesis of this business, is that it is dead boring. These are dead boring assets, not much changes. So when you run these assets around the world, when you flick a switch on and the light goes on, people don't call you up and say, oh, great, I turned the switch on, the light went on, thank you very much for running a good electricity system. Or if they're waiting to catch the train in the morning and it arrives on time, no one says thank you. You turn the tap on, the water flows, Right? It's what everybody expects. So a good day is when nothing happens. That's a good day. But if any of those things don't work, like, boy, the hounds are held to descend on you. Right? But that just goes with the territory. And all of us who've been in the sector for as long as some of us have realize this, and you go with the flow. So I've talked a bit about the super funds. I think it's interesting to just look at the debt markets. And if we look at the debt markets generally, right, there was a period, certainly, if we have to look at it over the last 24 to 30 months, we've gone from optimism, markets were hot, fear, panic, and then relief. So broadly speaking, margins, one would say broadly speaking, margins looked like they were pretty much back to normal basis, the new normal. Right. But if we pause for a while and say, what's happened in the last couple of months? Because everybody feels a bit nervous in the last couple of months. And in the last couple of months, you, looking at US bond spreads, they've gone up a bit. They've gone up a bit. So money is definitely available. What happens in the financial markets is the pricing and the terms change of the availability.